with the Lord's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. We witness that God is one. We witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa la wahtuhu la shurikala. Ashadu anna muhammadan wa abduhu wa rasulu. Praise be to Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the mighty, and the wise. We thank him for his blessings on us, on humanity. We thank him for his special gift to humanity, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we were to start collecting on our computer or any other form of counting, a list of all of the things that Allah has done for us, we would be wasting our time and we would never be able to add it all up. We would miss many of the things that we take for granted. Sometimes we don't even recognize a blessing when we get it. Never can we count all of the favors that Allah has bestowed on us. Allah says in the Quran, is then he who creates comparable to any that cannot create? Will ye not then take heed? For should you try to count Allah's blessings, you would never be able to compute them. Sadaqallah This is a human characteristic, it's a, a, a human propensity to forget. Allah says about Adam, we found no firm resolution on his part. He was forgetful. We find again in the seventh chapter of the Quran where shaitan is engaged in a colloquy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, then will I certainly come to them from before them and behind them and from their left and from their right and you will not find most of them to be thankful. When we talk about Allah, we say Allahu Alam, Allah knows all. Shaitan was not telling God something he didn't already know. He was merely taking an opportunity to tell us that most of us, when we reach before our Lord, will be found ungrateful for the blessings and the mercy of Allah. All throughout the Quran, Allah gives us examples he says he does not disdain to use any similitude from the highest to the lowest. He appeals to each and every one of us as human beings on whatever level we may be on. And he gives us information that we can see clearly. One such situation in the Quran is where Allah says, you are out at sea and you are being tossed back and forth and the waves look like they're about to overcome you. Now you may think it's only people that go out in a boat. I don't think like that. I'm thinking about a situation where I'm not in control. I'm thinking of a situation where I'm being deluged from all sides. I'm thinking of a situation where I don't have a rudder to guide myself where I want to go. I'm thinking of a time when I need a lot of help. He says, what if I had you at sea? And you find yourself being tossed and turned. He said, you call on me in all sincerity. And I get you safely to the shore. And then when you get on the shore, he says, you give part worship to others. You say, well, I'm not a fisherman and I don't go out on boats, so I don't know what that got to do with me. Let me tell you what it has to do with you and me. Every time we find ourselves in a situation where we have no control at all and we are almost overwhelmed, we call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all sincerity. We actually play, let's make a deal. If you get me out of this, Allah, I sure enough will make all five prayers. If you just help me get out of this situation, I I'll be more charitable. I'll give Sadaka regular. Oh, Allah, just get me out of this. If you put me safely back on shore, 
I'll remember you and I'll be grateful. But Allah says, once he gets us back on the shore, once we get on our firm footing, once the IRS ain't trying to audit our books, once the unemployment check doesn't have to come because we're working again, once we get back on our feet, we start giving credit to someone else. I see you got a job. Yeah, they couldn't deny my application. I was at the top of the heap. <laughs> oh, I see that you got your tax problem solved. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you about my tax man. He's the best. What about Allah? Didn't Allah come in there somewhere? Wasn't it he that you were calling on late at night and early in the morning? Once you get on shore, you forget. But I like reading the ayahs that come after. He says, do you think that I can't send you back to sea? Do you think the bankruptcy court closed up just because I got you out of it? Do you think the unemployment line has disappeared just because I took you out of it? Allah says, I can send you back again. But then he broadens it and shows us a broad array of his weaponry. He says, I can either take you back to sea and drown you, or cause an earthquake to swallow you on the earth, or I can send a tornado and wipe you out. <laughs> In Surah Al-Baqarah and Ayat 56, Allah says, And we raise you up after your death, and ye have a chance to be grateful. Then do you remember me, and I will remember you. Be grateful to me, and reject not faith. Repeatedly, Allah reminds us that we should be grateful. Looking at the word grateful as it appears in the English language, it actually comes to us through the Latin language. And everywhere that I find the word grateful in the Quran and Arabic, I find the word thankful actually. But when we go into the English language, it's coming to us out of Latin through etymology and the word we get is grateful. I found it interesting that the word grateful is an adjective. Now you may not be a real grammar student and neither was I, but I found this tremendously interesting because it said that grateful is an adjective and an adjective modifies a noun. Now I didn't get too far in this English stuff, but I did remember it said a noun is a person, place, or thing. So I'm understanding now that if I'm grateful, and the word grateful is an adjective, and an adjective modifies a noun, and I'm a noun, then I should be showing that I have been modified in my behavior if I am grateful. A modifier makes a difference in you. We should be grateful to our parents. And Allah put emphasis as the prophet spoke to the companions on the basis of this, he said the mother three times. Companion said, who should I honor? He says, your mother. And after that, who? Your mother. You know it had to be a father asking this. And then he asked again, and who? He said, your mother. And then after that, what? And then you. He put her in a special position. It is interesting that I don't care whether you're famous or infamous, whether you are a male or female, a king or a commoner, whether you are rich or poor, Allah has established this life so that every human being has to be born in through a woman. He has entrusted the life of every human being first to a woman. The mother is our first teacher, our first nurse, our first peaceful conflict resolution advisor. Get that back to him, it don't belong to you, and you sit down over there. She's our first nutritionist. Eat all your food and eat your vegetables too. She's our first behavior positive reinforcement source. You did good today, son, daughter. Keep up the good work. We should be thankful and show gratitude for our parents, 
and for our mothers. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, even when they get old, do not say a word of disrespect to them. We should be grateful for the fact that Allah has chosen us to be Muslims. There are approximately six, six and a half billion people on this planet. We like to quote the statistics that one out of every four people on the planet is a Muslim. There's one billion, six, seven million Muslims. But nobody can remember when we had the meeting and we decided to pick candidates to be Muslims and your name came up. Allah is the one that selected us to be Muslims. We should be thankful to him that he chose us. And our behavior should reflect our gratitude. I work in the prison and yesterday I went to visit a brother that was in the hospital infirmary, we like to call it. And he's doing life. He's doing life. And when I went up to visit him in the hospital, <clears throat> they told me he had had an operation done. I didn't really know what to expect. I went into his room. They had, even in the hospital, they got him locked up. So they unlocked his door and I went inside. And he had a hole about the size of a quarter in his throat. And he was trying to talk, but only air was coming out. The nurse told me they had discovered cancer on his larynx, on his vocal cords, and they had to remove it. So he cannot talk anymore. And as I told him, I want to make dua with you. I want to pray with you, spend some time with you. He turned and he pointed to only two things in that little cell. He pointed to the Quran that was sitting by his bed. Do you want me to do anything for you, brother? Do you need anything? He just pointed at the Quran on his table right there. And he had an ayah that he had taped some kind of way on his wall. And the thing that I realized without him having to write and because he couldn't talk is that I am grateful that at least I have the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I left there, I realized he didn't need nothing else. Allah's word is sufficient. If that's all you have left, we should be grateful for that. Sometimes we need to be brought to that moment, to that <laughs> juncture, <clears throat> where we come to the clarity that Allah is sufficient and his word is all we need. And then we are grateful, grateful, grateful to him. We should thank Allah for his mercy. There may be some people that have lived their life in such a way that they don't really have to ask for forgiveness. I'm not one of them and I don't know too many. So I thank Allah for his mercy. And Allah says, if we came to him with sins as high as a mountain, sincerely beseeching him, not associating anything else with him, he would forgive us. Nobody can do that but God. Allah shows us the power he has. You can live a lifetime of sin and corruption and just with ibadah, submitting yourself to Allah, he can wipe it all out. Shouldn't we be grateful for that? Got men in the prison that are there year after year after year and they have made their peace. They have asked Allah to forgive them. But somebody other than Allah say, you still can't leave. I ain't finished with you yet. But I've changed my life. It doesn't make any difference. You go to a bank, you go to a business to get a loan or buy a car, get a house, and they're looking at what happened in the past. You say, but I cleaned my credit up. Yeah, but it's still there. Only Allah forgives. And the way he forgives, and it's connected to the attribute of Allah, Al-Ghafar, the way he forgives is he breaks the connection between the act you did 
and the punishment that would be drawn to it automatically. So he disin breaks it up. Can't even get to you no more. We should be thankful to him. We should be thankful to Allah for time. I don't care who you are. When death comes, everybody, rich or poor, old or young, black or white, it makes no difference. Everybody, when death comes, asks for the same thing. They ask for more time. Can I have a little more? I ain't ready yet. Can I have a little more time? And Allah says in the Quran, he tells everybody the same thing, no. Because I gave you enough time. And I already know if I gave you more, you will continue to do what you did all the time. So the answer for everybody is no. I've given you sufficient time. They had a saying when I moved in this city, in the streets as we say, among some of the intelligentsia that we call the slicks people and the hustlers in the street. They had a saying, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. <laughs> we should thank Allah for giving us time to come to him. As we make Salat, Al-Fatiha has in it a key where we have to say that Allah is Miliki Yawmidin. And almost every translation I have seen says master of the day of judgment. But that's not what din means. That is a conclusion we can come to because the word din actually means death. So Maliki Yomi Deen means a day when accounts will be settled, when debts will be paid. So we associate this with the end, so we say the day of judgment. But we shouldn't go past what the word actually means. The day of settling debts. So it tells me that every human being, myself included, has come into this life owing a debt that has to be paid. And the first debt that we should settle is a debt of gratitude. We should be grateful that Allah has blessed us with health. You don't have to stay up too late at night to see people in other countries and other circumstances that need your help, that need our help, that are in worse circumstances than we are. You don't have to walk too far in the city to see people that are situated in bad circumstances and need help. Many times we can look in our own families and find those individuals that need help. Every morning when we wake up, we should thank Allah that he has caused us to arise after causing us to sleep. I never can quite get over those individuals that think when they wake up in the morning it's because they had a constitutional right to do so. That the legislature met somewhere and it was a bill was passed that they have to wake up every morning. We should be grateful to Allah that he has awakened us. There are three things that very quickly come to my mind where we can show our gratitude. The first is called shukr of the soul, of the heart. And this is where we are showing our gratitude through our niyah, through our intentions. We're harboring in our heart this desire to express gratitude. The next one is called the thankfulness of the tongue. And this involves literally saying and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking him. I had a headache last night. I took bare aspirin. So I'm thankful to bear my headache is gone. I had indigestion. So I took this compound and I'll be on TV telling them it works. My stomach ache is gone. I can give credit to everybody and everything that helps me, but I forget to say Allahu Akbar. We give credit to everybody. Oh, the reason why my car runs so good? Oh man, I got a great mechanic. The reason why my accounts is like this, I got a great bookkeeper. God is supposed to be the one that we go to first. We should show gratitude of our limbs. Every day we should use our body, our limbs in a way that glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, I am grateful. 
Reverse quickly with me in your mind and remember that the word grateful is an adjective. And an adjective modifies a noun and we qualify as nouns. So being grateful is not something that I can just talk about. I'm going to surprise you by telling you that gratitude cannot belong to you. You can't rent it. You can't borrow it from nobody. And you can't really successfully fake it for long. It is something that you have to possess and in fact possesses you. Our behavior should be modified if we are grateful. If I am grateful that Allah has given me life, my life should be different than it was before I had the blessing of Islam in my life. If I am grateful for the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the ability to go into business, then the basis of my business should be different than it was before I recognized that Allah was the source of all good that came to me. I should be modified. Inshallah, we can remember simply to thank Allah with all sincerity for everything that he has done for us, for every good that he has sent to us, and for every blessing in the form of not punishing us for the sins that we committed. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salama ala khairu mursaleen Muhammad al-Nabi Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Gratitude helps us and builds character in us It helps us develop our iman If we truly are going to demonstrate our faith in Allah It should start with the gratitude We thank Allah that he has blessed us to be in this form. I don't think it's a small matter nor a stretch of the imagination that Allah propounds to us this statement. I could have created you in such a way that you were like a rock and you would have simply sat there. That goes over us. Or I could have made you like a tree and you would not have been able to move about. That goes over us. He is saying, I could have put you in a situation where you had no effect on your environment. You couldn't have did anything except sat there and complained. We should be thankful to Allah. Gratitude shows our taqwa. How can you be conscious that there is no God but Allah, but you never thank him for the fact that you know there is no God but Allah? Gratitude is a form of ibadah. It is a form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And gratitude is a charity for the soul. It helps us develop and it strengthens our character. I will conclude with an analogy that I heard from a very good brother. I'll never put it in print because I don't want to do it in plagiarism, but I want to share it with you. He said there was a man who discovered that a bird had built a nest by his house. And the bird laid three eggs in it. And he decided he wanted to keep track and start watching. And he noticed that the bird sat on the eggs and two of the eggs, a little pecking and bird came out. And one of them, there was no pecking. No bird came out, bird died. He said, I know what I'll do. If the bird comes back next year, I'm gonna help those birds so they can get out. So the next year the bird came back, three eggs again. He didn't wait for the little pecking of the bird trying to get out. He pushed a little hole in each one of them and said, now they'll be able to get out and all of them died. <laughs> Nature has developed a system whereby pushing against the eggshell, the bird strengthens itself. Its wings get strong enough for it to fly and it bursts out ready to meet the life that God created it for. But if it does not have a chance to exercise itself in the form of worship of God, making salah, performing zakat, if we don't let you get busy and remind you and myself that we need to break the shell ourselves, 
we will not be able to survive. Allah has blessed us with everything we need to crack the shell, to come out and to take flight as individuals, as communities, as a global ummah. Let us exercise those wings. Let us show gratitude and strengthen our moral fiber so that we can fly. And don't let anybody come and punch a hole in your head and tell you, don't worry about nothing. Just thank your tax man and make sure you get more customers for him too. We pray for the souls of the faithfully departed that Allah will grant them a peaceful rest in Jannah. We pray for the sick, the dying, and the destitute that Allah will ease their suffering and ease their pains. We ask Allah's choicest blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to endear to our hearts the Quran Kareem, to forgive us of our sins, to protect us and our loved ones, and to give us the ability to forgive ourselves and each other. Amen. Be coming.